everybody. Um, I just wanted to show that I I went ahead and purchased. Oh, and it's in mirror too, so I'm not sure how to undo that. But I purchased um, the life and work of Richard Yates, A Tragic Honesty, The Life and Work of Richard Yates by Blake Bailey. And I was talking about it in um, a former video of mine, and I didn't even know it existed until I started rambling about it. And now I have it, and I wish I, I could show you it better. I don't know if you can see better. I turn on my little, there we go, twinkle lights, and you can see it. But um, I'm so excited to uh, dive into this, and I might uh, do a reading of it and throw it up on my channel. And um, I'm going to read um, parts of the uh, uh, dust jacket. And um, I like to do, like, I would get on camera, but it's hard to, like, hold it and do this and this, that, and the other. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read... Um, both the front and back, and then I'll read the blurbs for you. So, A Tragic Honesty, The Life and Work of Richard Yates by Blake Bailey, with a remainder dot on it. <laughs> and here's what the dust jacket says. The first ever biography of acclaimed American novelist and short story writer Richard Yates. Celebrated in his prime, forgotten in his final years, only to be championed anew by our greatest contemporary authors. Richard Yates has always exposed readers to the quiet and not-so-quiet desperation of the American middle class. Classic novels such as Revolutionary Road and The Easter Parade are unforgettable portraits of ordinary people who evade the loneliness and boredom of their lives by cultivating romantic self-images until the inevitable moment when the truth rolls over them. With its depressed housewives, adult businessmen, desperate career girls, and would-be artists, Yeats's America was a panorama of high living, wistful striving, and self-deception. Yeats's life was a tragic comic disaster. The favorite child of an unstable and pecunious mother, Yeats described his youth as a hysterical odyssey through Depression-era America and beyond, from Westchester to Paris to Greenwich Village and back again, hounded by creditors every step of the way. Such an ordeal was the goad that made Yeats determined to reveal the truth, no matter how bleak that people like his mother tend to bury beneath the layers of everyday delusion. The most important thing, he liked to say, is not to tell or live a lie. What emerges from these pages is a man of fascinating contradictions, a gentleman of the old school who was rarely seen in public without a Brooks Brothers suit and fullered tie. Yeats could be a man of consummate integrity and charm, but his better self was constantly sabotaged by alcohol and mental illness. And even at the best of times, flipping over, a prestigious stint in Hollywood, say, or as Robert Kennedy's speechwriter, some fresh calamity was always in the offing. He drank too much, he smoked too much, he was accident-prone, he led an itinerant life, but as a writer he was all in place, said his friend and publisher Seymour Lawrence. A tragic honesty is a masterful ev evocation of a man who in many ways embodied the struggles of the great American writer in the latter half of the 20th century. The story of Richard Yates here stands as a singular reminder of what the writer must sacrifice for his craft, the devil's bargain of artistry for happiness, praise for sanity. Blake Bailey is the author of a previous book, The Sixties, and has written for a number of magazines, newspapers, and literary journals. He lives in northern Florida with his wife, Mary Brinkmeyer. Portions of A Tragic Honesty appeared in the Gettysburg Review, the New England Review, and Night Train. And, let's see. I'm trying to see, I'm trying to see where I'm at and where the book's at. Um, let's see. Distributed by Holtz Brink Publishers, 175th 
uh, Fifth Avenue, New York, New York. Um, let's see. And let's see some of these review blurbs. Um, okay. Early acclaim for A Tragic Honesty. If you did not love this handsome, terribly sick person in real life, as did so many of us in this good book, you will surely celebrate his gallantry in demanding of himself perfection in at least one part of his awful life, which was the words he put on paper. Little known is the fact that my friend Richard Yates not only gave us compassionate, meticulously detailed portraits of our own flawed selves in fiction, he was himself a major player in American history, in that he wrote some of the most moving speeches on the subject of civil rights ever delivered, which were then spoken by the late Robert Francis Kennedy. That was by Kurt Vonnegut. The next blurb, a tragic honesty makes clear once and for all that Richard Yates was both as hopeful and as tortured as his characters. The resemblance to Fitzgerald is terrifying. The booze and lonely rooms, the frittering away of a major talent. In resurrecting the lost world of this great American writer, Blake Bailey shows the same scrupulousness and unflinching eye as his subject, crafting an utterly absorbing, horribly sad, and at times pathetically funny biography. That's from Stuart O'Nan, author of Wish You Were Here. Blake Bailey's a compelling Blake Bailey's compelling biography of Richard Yates tells a great singularly American story about one of the greatest most singularly American writers who ever lived. A tragic honesty is a a tragic honesty is an honest tragedy. It is also a triumph. Mark uh, Weingartner, author of Crooked River Burning. Blake Bailey makes wonderful sense out of a sad and noble life that, until this book, fiercely resisted sense. Yeats's fiction sings to Bailey, and he teaches us how to listen to Yeats in all his tones. The compassionate, the self-examining, the intensely honest, the lyrical, the all-but-defeated Yeats all hang together here cohesively and poignantly. This is a biography, <laughs> this is a biography that truly gets its subject and communicates his essence with insight and with style. Stephen Goldleaf, professor of English at Pace University, co-author of the critical study Richard Yates and author of John O'Hara. Ooh, that would be interesting to read. Those, those would be interesting to read. And lastly, Richard Yates was an American master. Over a difficult lifetime, he managed to write a considerable body of profound, often deeply troubling fiction some of the finest of anyone in his time. The example of his dedication and accomplishment have influenced a couple of generations of writers. A Tragic Honesty is a must-read for anyone who is serious about contemporary fiction. It is heartbreaking, informative, and inspiring. And that's from William Kittredge, author of Hole in the Sky and the Best Stories of William Kittredge. So there are all the blurbs. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, by Picador, New York. Um, and, uh, the contents, a lot of the chapters, uh, are entitled from the short story titles. I know this is a mirror and this is annoying, but, um, I'm gonna show it anyways. And, uh, I love that it starts with the Caliche Road. So I'm looking forward to reading that. I don't know how to, like, put this not in mirror. Okay. And then there's some pictures. I don't know if I can lift the book each time and show each of these, but these should be interesting. That is cool. This is so cool. I know this isn't great, but... Like, I think... You have his mom and his dad. His mom was a sculptress. His dad was an operatic tenor lost among the salesmen. So I don't know if, you know, he had to give up his art for his work. But that's him as a young child. Richard Yates and his sister Ruth shortly before their parents' divorce. 
in 1929. What an awful year. Ruth would always say that her childhood in Hastings on Hudson was the happiest time of her life. That's cool. So you had a uh, sister. Yeah, and I'm not, I don't think I'm going to read all the little blurbs, but just show the pictures. The pictures are great. He's, I think, this, this one right here. Let's see. Younger pictures of him. He's very handsome. Let's see. I'll read this uh, little caption underneath that school picture. Yates was a conscientious editor-in-chief of the school newspaper, the... Avonian. <laughs> Ava, Avonian? And uh, his friends Ernest Vicky Wright and Hugh Pratt were also on the staff. Dick ran everything of a literary nature, one classmate recalled. He might have been the only one of us who knew exactly what he wanted to do with his life. Become a writer of fiction. That's great. And let's see. Is this the next page? I'm trying to turn the page. Yates's senior page in the Avon yearbook, The Winged Beaver. <laughs> it's an interesting one, eh? And he had um, his childhood, or not his childhood, it's not a childhood drawing, but his uh, artwork, which is interesting. And Sheila Bryant in the late 40s, when she first met Yates, she was tall and slender with rich dark red hair and a pretty bony face, but could sometimes look warily stern, as if the world were trying to put something over her. So we'll get into Sheila. Yates' sister Ruth and her husband Fred, who looks just like Laurence Olivier, with their children Fred Jr. and Peter in 1945. So I think in the beginning, he talks about contacting his family, and his family was nice enough to um, share these, you know, very private pictures. It's a very conscious decision to show the world, you know, either yourself or a loved one. But this was very nice of them. And I always wondered, like, if, like, one of his daughters or something uh, typed in his name on YouTube and all my videos came up where they think I'm some kind of nut for reading his, his work or posting all this kind of stuff about him. But these are lovely pictures. And I can't, you know, I can't wait to read, like, who these people are because obviously they were very influential in his life. And that's, that's a, I've seen that picture used as an uh, author's picture. nice. Yeah, there's only a few more. It's hard to hold it like this. I can't think of an easier way to do it. And if you want to take a look at it and pause it, that'd be nice. Or, or, or it'd be easier. It shows the progression of his life. A cartoon Yates drew of himself and his youngest daughter, Gina. That's cute. God. Yates and his friend Seymour Krim in New York, 1982. The two writers were both in the middle, in the midst of a long and lonely bachelorhood. So I'm sure I'll read about that. But yeah, I think I'm going to read this um, on my channel. It's nice to see him, you know, seated and there was a desk picture, I don't know if I just showed it already, but I love that. No, it's like the last picture, okay. Him sitting on the car, and I love seeing pictures of authors that they're at. Let's see. In the bright winter of life, Yates sitting at his L-shaped desk about three months before his death. Wow. For some reason or another, that kind of thing always moves me and um, 
Man, I really can't wait to read this. And I'm really thankful that his family participated in it. Um, let me see before I click off here. Um... I am most indebted to Richard Yates's family. If any one of them had declined to cooperate, this book would have been greatly diminished. And I'll read the rest of it um, when the time comes, but clearly they were very much involved. So I, I doubt anyone will ever come across this video, but thank you so much for sharing, um, you know, pictures and personal stories of Richard. Um, he's had a huge influence on my life. I've got a few books, like, I don't even have to get up to go get them, like, within my reach. He's, um, gotten me back into reading and m moved me. And, uh, I just love his work, and I'm really thankful that I <laughs> posted a video not too long ago kind of blathering about him, and when I was doing that, I was looking up on his Wikipedia page, I think, and came across this, that I had no idea existed. And now I do, and now I have it, and I love that. And I didn't know that, uh, regretfully, I didn't know his work existed until um, I saw this film. And I don't know what it is. Some things hit, some things miss, but he's he hit with me, and um, and it means a lot to connect with an artist's work and feel a little bit more alive and um, connected to something, and he certainly did for me. So um, I think that's about all I'm going to say about this. I just wanted to share this because I'm so excited to um, dive into this and read. I'm sure it'll not be <laughs> as upbeat as my mood is right now. But um, I'm excited to read it nonetheless, and however it turned out, I think he made a fantastic impact on not only um, the world of literature, but, you know, art in its own right. And uh, I hope that his work will continue to touch people for, you know, a long time to come. And I think I'm going to end it there. Thank you so much for clicking on this and um, hopefully learning a little bit more about the wonderful Richard Yates. Thank you.